Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Songu. Uh, and uh, first of all, I have to thank uh, the, uh, the organizer very much for bringing me, uh, bring me here in very, very nice city and present uh, uh, the global effort to search for the action and wisps. Okay, here is my uh, outline. So I'm going to start with the you know, short background you know, so about the uh, dark mirror itself and then ge generic features of wisp and then search strategy and something like that. And then I'm going to spend most of the time here in this section uh, for action or action like particle searches, uh, depending on the, the coupling, photon, fermion, or, or uh, EDM. And then I have you know, a couple of slides for, uh, to address the WISP search, hidden photon, and, and chameleon particularly, and I'm going to summarize the talk. Uh, before I start, you know, I was not able to cover everything, so particularly uh, the indirect search, and I wasn't able to cover the all individual efforts you guys are doing so far. Uh, and probably I've missed the most recent update, you know, on research. I really ap ap apologize for this, you know, but, you know, please, please you know, correct me, update me uh, during the talk or uh, over, over, the week, uh, over the workshop. Okay, so the document business is ex expanding, right? So we start with you know, WIMP. WIMP used to be the most popular version of the uh, dark matter candidate, uh, heavier than the important mass. On the other side, uh, action has settled down as, as the light version of the dark matter candidate, and then it extends uh, the mass range down to the 10 to the minus 20, to which it corresponds to the you know, size of the galaxy. In the meantime, you know, there is a couple of ideas to cover uh, the gap uh, in between. And then recently, uh, there is some idea, uh, the Primordial, uh, primordial uh, black hole. Also, have some uh, received some some recent uh, uh, attention out of that. So basically, uh, this flash shows that you know the the part of the space we have to cover is humongous. You know, but you know there is many ideas and many efforts is going on. So the future will be very bright. So my talk, particularly in you know, focus on uh, this area. Uh, okay, so we call this is a wisp area. Okay, so there are so many, there are many, many, many uh, different kind of particles in uh, wisp Jew. So let me start with the axion. Okay, axion was originally postulated uh, as a PQ solution uh, to the uh, strong CP problem uh, in particle physics, and then the mass and the coupling. Uh, is, is you know associated with the you know QCD scale, and we, we call that uh, particularly QCD action. And then, uh, so nowadays the in invisible action with the very light mass is uh, accepted as the general version of the action nowadays. And then later on, uh, it turns out that uh, the unique properties basically can tell us uh, the the mystery of the dark mirror. And then we have action like a particle. This is the generic version of the action uh, which, uh, where the, the mass and the coupling has nothing to do with the, the QCD scale. Right? And these, those things are categorized into the pseudo scalar particle. On the other hand, we have a scalar particle with a parity even. So one of the good examples is the chameleon over here. Uh, which is responsible for the expansion of, of the universe we believe. And then there are a vector like uh, particle. Uh, the hidden photon is a good example too. So this guy is basically plays two roles. One is the, the gauge build, uh, gauge made, made it in the, in the uh, hidden sector. And then the other one is dark matter itself. And then there is another type of particle, newly charged particle or sterile neutrinos or whatever. And then those are basically belong to the WISP category. So coupling says models. So actions can basically couple to the standard model uh, through photons, fermion, or EVM. Okay, so electrical interactions basically produce photons, right? And then those can be detected by measuring the, the, the power of the spectrum or simply counting the photon out of it. And then the spatial gradient over here of the action field itself can interact with the spin of fermion 
and then basically they, they, they enhance the, the spin precision of the system, which can be sensed by the magnetometer or, or NMR. And now here, uh, this is uh, some sort of tempor uh, temporal, temporal gradient, the time bearing, uh, the field oscillation basically induce oscillating EDM in, uh, EDM in your system, uh, which can measure the, using the NMR or uh, more polarimetry in, in storage ring. Uh, there are a few actual models depending on the origin of the QCD anomaly and this you know, spontaneous PQ breaking. And then we have the original version of the standard uh, PQWW action was excluded right away. Then now with the TFSG and then the KSB, KSB uh, is, is remained as an invisible uh, action model, particularly here, the singlet, uh, the, uh, the breaking, uh, breaking, uh, PQ breaking symmetry, uh, the energy scale is much larger than the, uh, uh, the vacuum energy uh, state. Here. So experimental searches also depending on uh, what kind of you know, source you have, right? So for dark matter uh, actions, okay, so heloscope or the, the lump element uh, approaches, it's the most sensitive to pick up the, the, the photon uh, from uh, dark matter actions. And then there are you know, quarks, gnome, and caspers, and the storage medium uh, can be sensible for the fermion or, or, or EDM uh, interactions. And also, you know, uh, this cast, either castor or yaxo, uh, searching for, you know, uh, solar action, uh, uh, solar axioms. Uh, this is, they, they are basically sunflower experiment. And then ALPS, uh, which is on the upgrade. And the Ariadne, through Ariadne, we can basically generate uh, the actions in lab and detect the lab. Okay, this has a little bit uh, different picture than others. All right, so the basically different uh, PQ, uh, uh, the breaking symmetry uh, basically predicted the different mass ranges over here, and then it, which required different uh, such strategies, okay, like that. So. And then this basically the such strategy depending on the you know, Compton, uh, the wavelengths of the, uh, the action, action particle, action um, field with respect to the, you know, the size of the experiment, all right? So here is the cavity regime, and then here is the quadrostatic regime, and the other side we have you know, the radiation regime too. All right, uh, so this is the status of the, the current current status of the action search all over the world. And here is in a GA gamma gamma particular in a, in a action to photon interaction as a function of mass. And then we have two uh, benchmark uh, the scenarios over there. And then looking at here, you know, offset, uh, uh, light cycle through world experiment is covered in this region. And then the solar action covers a very right, uh, wide region too. And then a uh, bunch of experiments you know, uh, utilizing the, you know, the haloscope techniques, which is nowadays very sensitive to the, the, the theoretically interesting regions too. And then recently uh, we have uh, LC circuit approaches you know, going, coming down uh, in this business. Uh, by looking at this plot, the, the bottom line of this plot is, is this thing. The most, you know, even if we put the, you know, the Tremendous efforts uh, the last uh, few, few, few decades, there are the most of the parameter space is still unexploited, right? So, so we have to be very busy to cover those things, you know, uh, there's many ideas and many, many efforts has been, uh, must have been there. So, okay, now let me move to the action and action like search. Uh, photon coupling first and then later as a formula and, and EDM. Okay, let me, uh, let me, let me start with the cavity heloscope, okay? The cavity heloscope is the most sensitive for microwave photon we know, okay? So that's why a lot of, you know, you know, you know community has been, you know, involved in, in this business. Okay, it is a required very strong magnetic field uh, to boost the action to the photon conversion. And then we need a tunable, very high Q uh, resonator to enhance the signal uh, through, through the resonant effect. And we need also to amp uh, amplify the, the, uh, this very the feeble signal uh, uh, through uh, quantum noise limited amplifier. And then 
uh, we also uh, perform this, this, this business in a very quiet environment too. Okay. But uh, by combining and integrating those things, this is pretty much possible. We can perform this thing in a pretty much a small size. So I, I consider those things as, as, a, as a good example for the ta tabletop uh, experiments. That's why it's pretty much popular uh, nowadays. So here, uh, the, some of the, the major uh, the cavity haloscopes listed here. Uh, there are dedicated talks, okay, uh, over the over the uh, over the workshop. So I'm not, I'm not going to cover in a, the detail of uh, in individual experiments, except that uh, I I would you know emphasize some some sort of highlights, the recent highlights. ADMX is continuously extending the search range uh, with the uh, DFS sensitivity, which is very nice. Okay, they covered up to one gigahertz at this point, and then recently they resumed the you know the THQ uh, for for this particular region to to reach the uh, DFSG uh, level, and then beyond that uh, they they will continue their uh, their job uh, beyond one gigahertz of the four four gigahertz. Okay, Haystack uh, introduced. Uh, uh, the, the quantum staging technology to our business. Basically, uh, they manipulated the, uh, the pair of you know, uh, JPAs and then basically uh, the broadening uh, the, the, the bandwidth, which effectively uh, increases the uh, uh, scanning rate by a factor of two. And then they are continuing to improve their, their technology uh, to improve the, the further the uh, signal to noise ratio. Okay. So CAP, I believe CAPP is the most, one of the most productive places last, for the last two years, okay? So recently, okay, we joined, uh, we joined the DFSG club, okay? Utilizing very strong magnetic field and the large volume, and then high performance in the JPA, and then we achieved, you know, 200 ml Kelvin, which is the lowest, you know, uh, noise temperature we have such, such, uh, achieved so far in this business. In the meantime, uh, we, we also have a you know, handful of you know, KSBG sensitive uh, the result. Uh, first of all, is you know, we have the this is the first data from the HTS magnet, 18 Tesla HTS magnet. Uh, the targeting is about you know, five gigahertz, which is very nice. And then we also have you know some uh, some data. Uh, using utilizing you know the most sensitive J, uh, JPA uh, so far, uh, targeting around you know, around the two gigahertz, and then look at the you know, noise level is 200 millikelvin at two, uh, two gigahertz. So this is a humongous. And then we also have you know the, uh, the data from the first version of the uh, so-called cavity, okay, which the CAPP uniquely developed so far. So at the first, uh, the, the first phase, uh, the, the quality factor is about uh, you know, 350K, okay? And which is still a lot larger than, higher than uh, the typical the copper cavity. So we have very nice results in, uh, uh, in this area, particularly uh, to, to around two gigahertz. And we also have an additional one, uh, uh, targeting a little bit higher frequency, which is around six gigahertz. Uh, utilize the pizza cavity, which is also developed the CAPP, and then and then they were basically able to cover the hundred megahertz around the, the six gigahertz. So so CAPP has been very busy with this business the last two years. Quarks, this is another busy place you know, doing a lot of things, you know, cavity development, you know, in a traveling wave, you know, stuff, and then super galaxies is doing uh, some single photon uh, detection de development. And then they are steadily doing uh, their, their job. And uh, this is recent, uh, t uh, the traditional uh, version of the, the cavity, uh, 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 which was pulled in the JPA recently. And then Organ has uh, uh, another new result. They basically target in the particular uh, theory, you know, it's after Kogenesis. Okay, which has you know, it's supposed to have a much higher uh, the coupling uh, to the action, uh, action like particle, and then their mass uh, mass range is basically coming from the you know, smash theory. 
So they're basically targeting a specific uh, uh, theory and they, they set up the, the, the system uh, to prove uh, the theory or something like that, which I think is, is a good idea too. All right, so this is basically the cavity helloscope so far, okay? So, so now, the periodic array, either of the, the dielectric or the, the metal wires, so basically can be sensitive to the radiation region, okay? This is because the such range basically depend on the, the interspace of the, the basic material, so which means that you know the the source frequency has nothing to do with the actual size. You can you can build the you know the, the detector as large as you, you, you want. That's why it's sensitive to high frequency uh, the region. That's why it's suitable for you know uh, post inflation scenario up to 100 gigahertz. So MedMax uh, utilizes the power booster with using uh, dielectric discs. And uh, they have, you know, in large scale experiment is still on, on, on proposal uh, staging. Uh, the reason uh, they, they demonstrate the concept using the five, you know, um, um, I said, uh, sapphire, sapphire, sapphire discs. And then they also the, performed the very nice in the 3D effect of the system. And then if I understand it correctly, they are prototype in utilizing uh, 20 discs uh, plant used one of the, the magnet uh, available at CERN. Okay, so there is a talk in, in Thursday about this. And then ALPA is, is another version over here. Okay, you, uh, you basically just, uh, make use of the, the resonance with plasma frequency of the, the, met, uh, the electron, uh, metallic electron, of basically the plasma, okay. Uh, okay, the demonstration of the uh, frequency tuning was, was done recently. And then they are uh, uh, setting up to some some uh, the experiment to, which they plan to the first phys uh, physics data in in a few years. Okay, uh, lumped element haloscope is basically sensible for the quad static reason. Okay, uh, their approach is a broadband low uh, low mass search uh, below. Uh, one microelectron volt. Uh, that's why the, you know, this search is sensitive to the, the pre uh, pre actions, okay? Uh, the Abracadabra uh, collaboration uh, demonstrated this concept using 10 centimeters small size of the cavity. Uh, uh, it's not cavity, uh, it's a system. And then recently they extended the search a little bit more, uh, which is referenced here. And then the, this effort was merged into a little bit larger uh, collaboration, which is called the DM radio, okay? And then depending on the, the scale of the uh, scale of the experiment and then and, and, and technology they developed, and they, they basically cover a very large uh, area, uh, and this is in a, in a uh, nano electron bolt area up to the, the micro electron bolt area, and then they are you know, currently in constructing uh, the pathfinder version uh, of the system, and then the Maria will you know, tell us more about these things on Thursday. In the meantime, the shaft brought the interesting idea. They introduced ferromagnetic material, so that's why you know, they, they enhanced the magnetic field by a factor of three. And then they also have a you know, pair of the magnets, and then the, the magnetic field is polarized in you know, the opposite way such that, that they can reduce the, the systematic noise substantially. Uh, they were able to the, the, the effective noise, noise uh, the power down to the 150 uh, auto, auto, auto Tesla per square root, which is very impressive. You know. And the slick uh, is the, the cylinder version uh, of the uh, lumped element heliscope, and the, basically they have the LC uh, coil inside of the, the magnet, and then they're outside, uh, they're the tunable, you know, uh, the, the capacitor, and then they are able to use uh, the one of the resonant mode of the cavity, uh, which increases the sensitivity of the particular region, which is nice too. Okay, so there are other experiments that I you know, has not covered so far. Okay, the running experiment, you know, the, uh, utilizing the cast, uh, cast dipole magnet. Uh, so we have the you know, uh, cast CAPP, Mario is here, and the Rajas is going pretty well. And then we also have new experiments, all right? So Granoble is started, you know, in a series, you know, joining this job. 
Okay, it is, I believe this is the first, uh, first uh, result from that. And then there is a Taiwan is in a group was formed, and then they are jumping into this business too. So I, I am, I'm pretty much happy, you know, nowadays there is an, even some group in Asia uh, joining in the business too. And the Sparks, you know, we, we heard these things about yesterday, right? So utilizing the spoken the cavity and then the 14 Tesla magnet, uh, which is, is under construction in, in mines. And then there are some of the you know, proposed, uh, very nice proposed you know, uh, experiments, particularly a bright experiment, uh, which is in, you know, adapted the, the, the uh, DC antenna concept. They have the proper uh, uh, reflectors, basically focused on all the generated photons into the particular one uh, place where the, uh, the photon sensors are located. In. Okay, so interesting is that you know their uh, schematic can be basically access to a uh, terahertz region where the typical the heliscope you know has not been able to access, which is nice. And then there is uh, Spain. Okay, you know Caldex experiments is jumping up in here. Okay, they are you know, targeting a W band 8200 uh, gigahertz utilizing uh, the kinetic uh, induction detectors they have been developing recently. All right, so this is the status of the heliscope searches uh, in the past uh, up to 2020, all right? So last, uh, um, last two years, so we have uh, this addi these additions here. Yeah, it looks like it is slow, but pretty, uh, pretty much like it's because of the, uh, the, the COVID pandemic, but we are still steady, which is important to me, all right? So, so yeah, this is the present, you know, uh, the version uh, of the heliscope searches in here, pretty nice. But nonetheless, uh, as you can see, most of the you know, in experiments is not sensible to uh, to the inter uh, theoretical the interest in region, and then we have the huge you know spaces in the unexploited. That's why you know still people are developing the system, and then and then experiment you know the, the thing. So so here is a, you know some some ingredient. The first of all is the magnet. So, so far, uh, you know, the experiment is heavily depending on the, uh, the low, uh, uh, low magnetic field relatively, uh, uh, so made of the niobium tie. And then we have now, now it is, you know, you know, you know the, some sort of a hybrid version of the magnet which produces a little higher uh, magnetic field and then, for example, the CAPP has a 12 Tesla 120 millimeter uh, aperture. And then we also have developing uh, even higher field in the magnetic uh, magnets using uh, uh, HTS, uh, high temperature spoken of the technology. Uh, and then, as I, as I mentioned, this is, uh, this is uh, what's demonstrated the CAPP. And you also have, you know, we used to uh, developing uh, the additional very strong uh, 25 magnet with the uh, collaboration with the BNL uh, using YBC or the, the pancakes. And then we do have you know, uh, quite a good number of the pancakes in hand. And then uh, when, you know, we are waiting for some other collaboration with you know, the, the finish the, the building of the magnet, uh, which is going to be good in the future. So, and then later stage, okay, so we have you know, very, very strong magnet all right, 43 Tesla, and even if you know the, uh, the both sides are small, this, this is the ha actually happening in Grand Novel. Uh, basically, three layers of uh, you know uh, hybrid uh, the magnet. Uh, the, the status seems to be pretty good, pretty promising for this. And then we also have the large size of the you know dipole detector. This is for uh, basically for uh, the the Mad Max collaboration. Right. So in the meantime, uh, there is another effort to, to recycle, the, recycle the existing the magnet. The ADMX also tried to recycle the, one of the, the MRI magnet, which is uh, available uh, in, in US. Uh, they have the uh, 9.4 Tesla and 800 millimeter wide. This is a huge one, okay? So they, uh, they plan to plug in the other, you know, many, uh, the multiple cavities here to, for, to, to probe for the higher mass actions. And then there is a plan to, you know, uh, another, another experiment, the bread, the prototype of the bread will parasite in here too. 
Okay, so this is the this is the magnet that I was mentioned uh, just before. Uh, it is available at Sun, and then uh, Mad Max is you know uh, plan to use this one uh, for their uh, prototype uh, experiment. So cavity, uh, most of the experiment uh, depending on the single uh, conventional and the copper cavity so far. Okay, there are two orthogonal ways uh, we're developing the cavity. One is the going into the high frequency, okay? So, so we can have the multiple uh, the cavities in series, or we can have the, you know, uh, the pizza cavity the concept here too. And then the other side, uh, we, uh, we want to have the high quality factor cavity too. Uh, the most intuitive way is you know, put, you know, putting some uh, 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 superconducting material inside the cavity. And then some of the efforts that have been done is so far very nicely, but you know, the problem is that when you have the magnetic field, uh, the quality is you know, great, uh, degraded substantially, but still there is uh, some, some margins there, uh, but you know, this is degradation is, 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 is some, some uh, series is later on. Uh, that's why you know, CAPP developing uh, the cavity based on uh, HTS technology, and then we have very unique design here, and then the, the, this is the one of the, the latest version uh, which target and uh, which was fabricated uh, targeting at 4.4, uh, 5.4 gigahertz, and then we put these things in the magnetic field and look at this, you know, the, the quality factor still survived more than, you know, 10 to the 7. Uh, so I would consider this is uh, some sort of you know, the milestone in this business. Okay, so in the meantime, so there are, there are additional uh, you know, panel orthogonal uh, approaches which basically increase the, the, you know, uh, the frequency and then, and then increase the quality effect as well you, uh, by using the, the crystal structure uh, of the dielectric material in here. And then one of the good things uh, is that if you use very, very uh, high quality of the dielectric material inside, and then basically uh, spin can be aligned very well at a very low temperature or high, high field, a uh, high magnetic field, uh, such that you can uh, enhance the, uh, the quality factor even further, uh, which is nice too. So, in terms of the photon detector, all right, so, so, Originally, we we depending on the power detection. Okay, starting into the uh, starting from the the hand, uh, This is transistor based uh, one, and then typical temperatures at Kelvin level. And then nowadays, most of the experiments rely on the, the another quantum limited noise the amplifier, which only in you know, a subtract to the the, the, uh, the so sort of the standard quantum limits over here. And then, as I mentioned, you know. Uh, the, the quantum security technology is being being developed and adopted. Okay, this is very nice. And then and then uh, by doing this thing, then we can overcome the, the quantum limits over there. On the other hand, okay, there is another effort to, to develop the single photon detector because the single photon detector has nothing to do with the you know, the, you know, the uh, standard quantum limit. They just count the you know, photon detector. That's why you know. Uh, this is you know, the game changer, particularly at high frequency and, and the very low temperatures over there. All right, so the Quarks team and, and then some formula, uh, formula team has been uh, developing those things too. But the drawback of, of the single photon detector has been developed so far is that they are very good you know, to lower the, the noise level. But they are the very, very short of you know tunability itself because they are the the, the matter over there is, is the coherent is the signal, all right. So in this in this case we have to consider another way, probably additional way, uh, to lower the uh, uh, noise temperature and and then even even be able to tune the frequency to the one of the good example would be uh, the using the read bug out system. Basically, you can. Tune on the frequency uh, by by stock effect uh, by applying the you know uh, uh, the electric uh, electric field uh, alternately and then this was basically demonstrated uh, in a, a couple of decades ago by by Japan groups Karak. Right. So I think that this is this is one of the way that we have to consider in this business. So now okay, this is so far uh, this is uh, all about the, the, the heliscope. So. Okay, this is helioscope, all right? So basically, uh, the sun, uh, sun can generate uh, 
the actions from the, the black body radio, uh, black body photons of KEB, which corresponds to the you know, sun, uh, uh, solar's in internal temperature, and then and then on Earth, you know, uh, the action can be reconverted into the X-ray uh, in laboratory magnetic field. Okay, so BNL has this the first uh, first time, and it was took over the uh, the experiment in Japan, and then then the cast was you know. It was, it was finalized in 2015. Now Yakso is taking over uh, this business. So Yakso uh, plan to use eight dipole, very strong one, very large aperture. Okay, so the goal is basically you know, enhance the, uh, the, the coupling at least by, uh, by one order of magnitude. Okay, so, so this, this machine then basically to prove the diversity, you know, the physics of a very wide, uh, wide range, right? Uh, this kind of things. And then nowadays in the baby Yakso, uh, the small version, the prototype version of the, of the, uh, the full scale uh, is on the construction of the Deji. Okay, this is first step for the full the Yakso. And then in the day, well, they will uh, utilize the full tensor 10 meter so, life cycling through the world experiments, okay, this basically, uh, we can generate an action using the very high power, the laser, and then they basically detect the other side of the wall, okay, so basically we generated, you know, the, the action uh, in the lab, uh, this approach is model independent, okay, so, uh, history is like a consortium uh, between you know, several group, and then Oscar, uh, CERN, and then ALPS, uh, which is uh, uh, as currently on the uh, upgrade. So I was, uh, I was told recently yesterday, uh, the upgrade is in really good shape, okay? And then those things, you know, the things, and then they are basically used uh, very long you know, tunnels, and then and they detect it's very long, so alignment issue is going to be there, but they are developing very nice in you know, the technology to open that, those issues, All right? The, the goal is basically increase uh, the sensitivity by, by three orders of magnitude uh, behind the, uh, the, the, the previous version, All right? Which is very nice. Okay, so formula coupling, uh, okay, so we have Quarks AE, so this is basically a ferromagnetic heliscope which can be coupled, actually can couple the electron, the spin, so we have, you know, uh, a series of the magnet system uh, which can be coupled to one of the, you know, uh, the, the resonant modes, and then recently they have the plug in the JPA, and then they, the first result was that came in in, in, in 2020. And then GNOME also is looking for uh, the topological defect dark matter, so the action, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the spatial gradient of the action can couple to the nuclear uh, spin, and then we have a global network around the world, more than 15 stations, and then they basically they are looking at the, the correlated uh, signal from uh, uh, out of those, those stations, uh, right? So, Ah, Casper uh, is this interesting, interesting uh, experiment. Uh, they uh, basically rely on the, uh, uh, utilizing the, the, the NMR technology, and they have two different versions. Uh, one is the uh, Casper Wind, and now they have changed the name to the gradient. Uh, the action can couple to the nuclear spin. Uh, basically, they you know, enhance the, the, the spin precision. And then they also have the, uh, the Casper Electric, uh, which actually can be coupled to, to, the, to the electric dipole moment in the presence of the, the external uh, electric field, okay? So that's why that, uh, they are uh, another, another you know, the precision processes is going on. And then they are utilizing the, the animal techniques where the llama frequency of the spin uh, is matched to the, the, the mass of the action. The, the enhancement once, uh, once is there, and the particularly so they are uh, there is you know sensitive, very sensitive you know less than ten to the minus eight uh, to very low uh, mass regions. So here is a one one remark that I want to uh, mention. All right, so is uh, CP violation in the QCD. Okay, the action field basically cancel this QCD term out, so effective. Uh, effective uh, the set term is goes to zero 
Uh, in other words, in you know, the QCD action basically, you know, the vanish the electromagnetic moment. However, if there is the additional CP violation in nature, and then there is, must be also the additional terminal over here, and then this is not going to be zero anymore, which means uh, EDM is not going to be zero, uh, which is indicated to you know, there is some, you know, you know, existence of non-QCD action field. Okay, that's why uh, the measurement of the EDM is important, okay, storage in proton beam uh, can prove uh, the proton EDM directly and then they plan to uh, improve the sensitivity by three orders of magnitude of the current limit, okay, and Ariadne, uh, because this is, this is non QCD action field, they can basically mediate, you know, uh, the interactions between uh, nuclear and nuclear, okay, so which acts as a you know, fifth force. Uh, something like this. Uh, this can be also the, uh, this can be can also generate the action field in lab. So no cosmological assumptions is there, and then by combining these things, all right. So negative result from both uh, these two independent ex uh, the action uh, experiment will tell you the decisive decisive exclusion of the action in this particular region where the area DNA is sensitive to. Okay, so I think this time is over. Uh, I have two slides, but you know, this is a hidden photon is going well. Uh, the LSW, LSW type is going on. Uh, there are you know, many uh, experiments that is going on, and Crow has a good job with uh, you know, the magnetic shielding and stuff like that. Uh, and the new ideas is here. I noticed that there is a two uh, the uh, dedicated talk over the uh, workshop, and then uh, we also have very nice in you know, the configuration of the cavity to en enhance the, the sensitivity by two orders of magnitude developed by CAPP. Okay, Kamelion is another good one. Okay, the dark matter uh, energy candidate. Okay, basically uh, because it is can, uh, the, the the reason it is called it in a chameleon because of the effective potentially depending on the on the, the local environment basically the matter or the electromagnetic field which means they can couple to the matter and they can uh, on the other side they can also couple to the photon too. Right? So there are uh, some exp uh, experimental efforts uh, based on the. the uh, uh, after the low effect, the gamma of chase in ADMX also demonstrated this thing, and then uh, and then uh, solar camera on pretty much adapted the similar concept from the, the solar action searches. Okay, depending on the you know uh, the detector you put in in, in uh, side of the other side of the of, of the system, uh, you can you can be uh, sensible to the. Uh, photon interaction or the matter in the interaction and stuff like that. And this is, this is the, the latest version uh, of this search. Okay, so new ideas, I have noticed that there are very, uh, in very nice ideas of, of, of the conference and I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't really, you know, cover this thing, but please, you know, uh, look at uh, these this, uh, talks too. Okay, this was the, uh, the plot I showed you early in the morning, early, early stage of my talk. Okay, so this is uh, present, and then I expect in the next few decades, most of the parameter space will cover the, with different, uh, different approaches, which is very exciting, okay? So this is a uh, me conclusion. Okay, this is exciting time. Uh, tremendous effort has been uh, going on, and then communities is getting large, right? So next few decades is going to be very critical and very important for us. Okay, thank you very much. So after glow, uh, if uh, if the mixing of the, the, the chameleon, uh, the mixing time of the chameleon uh, to to the photon is very long enough, okay, then so you basically generated the chameleon uh, from out uh, out source the RF signal, whatever signal, and then you generated you generated uh, the, the chameleon and then basically turn off the other source, and then because because uh, the mixing time is long enough. Uh, even after the, the, the out, our, our source is turned off, the, the, the chameleon will turn into the photon later on, which is, which is they, they called the afterglow effect. Another question. Maybe I have one. Um, you were mentioning single hole detection ideas for tablescopes. Yeah. 
Could you go a little more into detail and explain that? Okay. So there is there, there is some effort from from uh, uh, the quarks, and then they they utilize in particular design of the JPA, uh, the JPA, Joseph Joseph uh, you know get the contact there, and then they basically depending on the how to, you know multiple you know apply the voltage, uh, they basically uh, count on the on the. Uh, the, the single photon detectors, uh, particularly 14, it was designed at the particularly 14 gigahertz. And then they also claim that their dark count, uh, which could be the, the, the dominant uh, the noise source in the single photon detector, but they claim that the dark, dark count rate is 10 to the minus 3 hertz, which is some people un, unbelievable, but, but they claim that. Okay. On the other side, you know, the, the Fermi lab, uh, uh, the group, you know, uh, utilizing the the, the quantum uh, quantum qubit system, which nowadays is you know very developed by the, the quantum computing uh, society. Okay, uh, they they have the, they use the, you know, some sort of you know, a transmon uh, qubit, and then uh, they improve the the signal to noise ratio more than 15 dB. Okay, which means uh, this, uh, in terms of the scanning rate, this is more than uh, 3,000 uh, 3, times better. This is a very, very, very nice one. But the caveat is that, you know, this thing, the, uh, the, the resonant frequencies cannot be changed at all, yeah, because, because you know, the, the way it was designed, you know, something like that. That's why, you know, uh, this, is, this is our proposal. Uh, basically, uh, some groups at Yale uh, started developing uh, this, uh, the readable atom-based uh, single photon detector nowadays. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Then we move on to the next talk. Okay, thank you very much.